So you've heard the net zero, right? But have you heard of the hundred billion pound infrastructure gamble? And I'll call it a gamble that's needed to get the UK to where we want to be for 2030 or where we're told we need to be. Our power grid, so whatever that powers your lights, your homes, charges your cars, it was built for coal. It's built when we were a coal burning nation. Uh, and it's buckling. It's collapsing under the weight of the Green Revolution, to be honest. So we're talking about the Great Grid Upgrade, new nuclear plants, and enough wind power to run the country. But we've got 770 gigawatts stuck in a queue to on-stream. Some of those projects will never ever meet fruition anyway. The whole system's bunged up. And a long history of project failures. The question is, can we do it? Will it be ready for 2030? So let's dive into probably the biggest infrastructure challenge that the UK has ever faced. So, the problem. We don't have enough wire. The grid's obsolete. The grid was designed around central large coal fires and gas plants built near cities. Uh, now, our power comes from huge onshore and offshore wind farms, most of which are in the North Sea and in Scotland. And the transmission infrastructure, the wires, simply only there in enough quantity and volume and thickness to move all that energy where it's needed, where the bulk of the UK pop population is, in the south, so London and the Midlands. And demand spikes coming. It is coming. By 2050, electricity demand in the UK is expected to double from what it is now. Double. As we switch to EV vehicles, heat pumps, and by 2030 alone, the demand's forecast to jump by 20% to 333 terawatts. And if the grid isn't ready, we'll have to switch off the cheap wind power. If it is cheap, I debate that. A process called curtailment. So we pay curtailment payments. So when we can't use the energy that's being produced, we still pay for it to the energy companies. And it's costing us billions. So 2025, the demand at the moment is 279 terawatt hours. 2030, the demand's predicted to be 333 terawatt hours. If I get this wrong, I'll backtrack and post it up here. But I think that's about right. So the solution that's proposed is a 100 billion overhaul, which they're calling the Great Grid Upgrade. Uh, the core solution is National Grid's Great Grid Upgrade, which is 17 major projects costed at around 19 billion for the main transmission lines and the total investment needed for everything. Transmission, distribution networks and upgrades is upwards of 100 billion. So there's no chump change, yeah? So, what do we get from that paltry sum of 100 billion? It's a mixed bag of new infrastructure. So, they want to build 1,300 new pylons and huge new high voltage DC interconnector cables, which they're calling the Eastern Green Links, which is going to go from Scotland down to England uh, and it'll link up with a series of rectifier stations. <laughs> So these are going to be the new super highways to transmit power. And some new power stations were trying to replace the backbone of the grid with some 43 to 50 gigawatts of offshore and onshore wind capacity and 47 gigawatts of solar and some new nuclear stations. So we're looking at Hinkley Point C and Sizewell C alongside some a push for small modular reactors. That's not to say we'll ever get them. So what's gone? We've lost oil fired, some gas fired, and all the coal fire stations. And the last of the coal fire stations went 2024. So 2030 we're looking to get offshore wind 43 to 50 gigawatts, solar power 45 to 47 gigawatts, and flexible storage. So large battery farms. 23 to 27 gigawatts. <laughs> yeah. 
reality check. We live in the UK, we don't have a great history of infrastructure projects. Think HS2 is a recent example. So, let's talk about the queue crisis. It's scary. There's a staggering 770 gigawatts of proposed green energy projects that sit in a grid connection queue. That's enough power to hit, enough power to hit net zero targets several times over. But it's done in a first come, first serve basis, not on the basis of the likelihood and the timely fashion of it being put on, on stream. Now, some of these dates are offered connection dates, say the tail end of the 2030s, right? So nearly 2040. <laughs> so they're launched a reform project uh, at the start of 2025 to clear the queue and they're trying to prioritise projects that are ready to go and not things that have been written in the back of a cigarette packet. Let's see how that works. And the ghost of Hinkley. So that didn't go well, and it's not gone well. So if we want to think about how likely these things are to, to actually work and get on stream with the time, the tight timelines that have been proposed, then let's look at the last big energy project. So Hinkley Point C, it was supposed to be running by 2025, right? The operational date for it to be on stream is pushed to 2029 to 2031. And the costs have went from 18 billion to 35 billion. Guess who's going to pay for that? The transmission bottleneck. So, as a rule of thumb, infrastructure projects in the UK run 37% over budget and over 50% over the schedule. Delays are virtually guaranteed because of the planning, supply chain issues and public opposition, not in my backyard. Everybody wants power, but the means of supplying the power, that's in somebody else's backyard. It's not to be in ours, right? What do we want? No pylons! When do we want it? Now! So, the legal challenges alone will push the inception date of most of these projects way past their proposals. But will it even meet demand? The government's aiming for 95% of the electricity to come from low carbon sources by 2030s. Is that achievable? Well, well technically yes. Technically yes. It's planned, but realistically, that's something else. And it's a trade-off. If the Great Grid is delayed, will we plunge into a blackout? Probably not. Will it meet demand? No. We'll have to keep the gas fire plants on longer than planned and keep paying curtailment payments for the wind that we can't use because we can't transmit it. So you'll be hit by the mercy of on-stream and gas plants that are being kept in reserve that might meet demand if we need it. And then you'll get to pay twice over because you're paying for curtailment payments for the wind turbines that can't send the power to where it's needed. Yeah. So the consensus, the level of investment, the scale of the challenge, how the UK delivers infrastructure, planning and regulations, I think it's a pipe dream. Uh, and I think the target of 2030 will remain that, it will remain a dream. So, I suppose, what do you think? Do you think the UK's massive infrastructure plan will beat the clock? That uh, it will be all singing, all dancing, or on budget and on time? Stick in the comments whether you think it's going to it's going to meet our needs and it's going to meet our needs in time to stop the lights going off. I'll be interested to see the, the consensus opinion for you guys. And if you don't mind, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over at last. Like and subscribe, folks. Saves him moaning.